right, so we might get started. I can see we do have a, a number of people in already, so we will get started. But um, for any latecomers, feel free to just tune on in. Um, so as I said, thank you once again for joining us. Um, my name is Ramona. I'm the sales executive for Coral Expeditions. Um, and today we'll actually have the pleasure of being joined by one of our amazing guest lecturers. Um, so I'll be introducing him very shortly for you. Um, we probably do have a combination of people on today who have traveled with us before, um, who may not have traveled with us. Um, and may have even seen these webinars before as well. But um, of course, we do have some very important things which we do need to cover, of course. So um, I will go over those just briefly for you. Um, so apologies if you have seen those on our last webinars as well, because I know we do have a number of people that have tuned into our regular webinar series. Um, but basically, in order to resume cruising um, and have everybody cruising with confidence, um, we've actually maxed out our, our numbers at 99 guests um, on our ships. So on this particular expedition, we'll be using the Coral Geographer and the Coral Adventurer, um, who would normally take 120, but at present they are a maximum of 99 guests. Um, all of our guests or passengers and crew are um, actually Australian. So we're actually based up here in Cairns. So I'm sitting up here in sunny Cairns at the moment. Um, and our crew are all on hand, ready at the drop of a hat um, to jump on board our vessel. So that's been a, um, a saving grace during these very challenging times um, in order to get back to cruising. So being Australian flagged, that was um, one of the huge highlights for having our ships um, alongside here in Cairns. That allowed us to resume sailing. Um, so we've been very blessed with that. Um, and then in order to actually cruise as well, we put together this very um, thorough sail safe plan, which you may have seen already. Um, so there's a few compulsory things required in order to, um, to board one of our cruises, which is um, a medical screening seven days prior, um, where you go and visit your GP. Um, and we're also having everybody, including crew and anybody actually visiting the ship, uh, will be required to undertake a PCR test. So a COVID-19 PCR test. Um, Ideal time frame is 72 to 60 hours. Um, can't be anything outside of 72. Um, and they need to have a negative result um, in order to board. Um, if there is a, a positive result that comes back, that will mean that you will not be able to board. So that just gives us this nice little um, safe bubble when people are on board. Um, you know that they've got that negative test that's come back. Um, and we've got that beautiful safe travel environment as well on board. So of course we will be you know, practicing all of the, you know, the safety protocols and an enhanced cleaning and all of the regular stuff that comes with it. However, guests aren't required to wear masks on board. Um, so we've still got that really relaxed type of feel. The cruise itself hasn't actually been inhibited um, in, in the actual flow of the day. Um, the only change that you might find is that we've gone and done away with our buffets and now everything will be an a la carte or a um, like a table per service type scenario. Um, so in order to um, have that little bit of sense of security as well at the moment, being that it is a little bit of um, uncertain times for some people, we have also introduced a complimentary deposit protection uh, for any bookings that get made prior to the 31st of March, 2021. Um, and if for any reason um, you aren't able to travel once you have booked, and it's as a result directly to COVID-19, then we are doing future cruise credits um, of funds paid. So a couple of little sure saves in there to um, just ensure that uh, sense of security for you. So, so without further ado, um, I'm gonna get stuck into the itinerary because obviously that's why everyone's here, not to hear about our COVID safe plan, but um, it is a very important feature. Um, so we've started up a series of itinerary. So the first one is actually departing just around the corner. So we've actually got our coral adventure at the moment. She's um, just started our South Australian itinerary. Um, so she's currently cruising down around the beautiful waters at South Australia. Um, post that, she's actually going to be heading over to WA and that's where she'll be starting her first expedition, which is on the 10th of March 2021 this year. Um, and that will be from Fremantle to Broome. And that's going to be our beautiful Abrolhos Islands and the Coral Coast. Um, so we will have a number of expeditions this year. 
Um, but for those that are very keen to travel right now, we do have as well um, still availability on board our 10th of March departure as well. So I'm actually going to hand you over to the man of the hour, which is um, Howard Gray, um, our guest lecturer on board the Abrolhos Islands um, itinerary. So over to you, Howard. Um, feel free to share a little bit about yourself. Yes. Uh, hi, Ramona, and hi, everybody watching in. That's um, terrific. I hope um, those of you already booked to come along here as excited as I am about this, this little adventure. Um, my background is I've actually been um, living in Geraldton on the West Coast for about 40 years now, and um, most of that time been heading out to the Abrolhos Islands and further up and down the coast. Um, you know, researching, getting under the water, on the land, um, written some books about the fishing industry, the Batavia wreck, uh, the discover of the Hauptmann Abrolhos Islands, Frederick de Hauptmann. So it's just endlessly fascinating. And um, I'm really looking forward to sharing, you know, what I've learned about it and what I can, um, you know, what's so wonderful about this bit of the coast all the way up to Broome, just fantastically diverse, fantastic history. It's unmatched anywhere else, I think. And, um, and places that, you know, this really will give the opportunity to go and see that are otherwise very, very difficult to get to. Thanks, Howard. I mean, obviously, we would love to cover off every single highlight within today's um, webinar, but otherwise, you'd probably be stuck in your um, chairs for ages. So we will try and keep it to about 20 to 25 minutes for you. So we've got some time at the end. But um, absolutely, um, Howard will try and share as much um, about these itineraries as possible. So um, you can see there a bit of a, a map and plan of where the expedition is going to be partaking and, um, and traveling. I mean, you can see those dates there as well um, of our future sailings. So yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so we start yeah. out in Fremantle, and um, on the way up, we'll have opportunity to give you, a, you know, some background um, stories and such like, so that you know what it is that you're seeing when you do get to the Abrolhos. Um, we arrive at the Abrolhos early in the morning, and we'll be able to cruise along the edge of one of the southern islands and uh, look across and see a lot of the places where. A lot of the history took place, the early discoveries, some of the shipwrecks, and get a good idea of the overall layout of the islands. Um, and then we have the treat of visiting one of the one of the unique little fishing uh, camps on the island. The the islands have fishing camps for um, fishermen, rock lobster fishermen, aquaculture, and so on. And um, we've got a very special treat lined up there, visiting one of the uh, families there who have. Um, a rock lobster fishery. They've also got aquaculture with these beautiful black, unique abrolhos pearls. Um, and uh, they've also got a little tourism venture and they make jewelry and all sorts of stuff there. So quite a unique situation. And while we're there also, we get to um, at that southernmost, the, the abrolhos are three big groups of islands and um, that's at the southernmost group, the Pulsar group. And um, we'll be able to do some snorkeling there and see some of the beautiful coral reefs that are you know, unusually way, way down this southern part of the ocean. So, you know, if you that um, also will be something really quite spectacular for us to pick up on that first day. Yeah, we'll be sharing um, a little bit more detailed itinerary images for you soon too as well. But um, absolutely, it's great for, uh, for Howard if you could give us a little overview of just like a very brief overview of the rest of the locations, it'd be great. <laughs> yeah, so then we head up to um, the middle group, the Easter group, and there the wildlife I think will be the focus of what we see. The, the, the islands are um, uh, renowned for their um, millions of seabirds that nest on these islands. So we'll get to see a little bit of that, what's going on at this time of the year. And then we go up to the what's called the Wallaby Group, which has way out in the ocean, 60 kilometres offshore, all of this um, mainland type vegetation and animal life and so on, quite a little little Noah's Ark, if you like. And um, and also that's the site of the um, that notorious Batavia shipwreck. So we get to travel a and go on land with some of the places where that happened and hear the stories around that. Maybe if the weather's good, even get to dive on the wreck site. Um, so that's a pretty special little bit of the trip, that one. Um, then we head off up to up to Sharks Bay. Um, most of you know about Dirk Hartog and the early discovery of Australia, so Dirk Hartog Island. These spectacular cliffs, you know, I think on this ship we'll be able to get in and see those up close. Um, and then head through into the bay, see, see lots of the spectacular 
um, country there, the, the red earth coming right down to the sea. Um, the Malgana people, the local indigenous people will be sharing their, their knowledge and so on with us as well. So that's going to be a really special trip um, through there. And um, it's, it's a world heritage area, the first one in Australia. So that tells you something about what it's like. Naturally, the big sea grass meadows, dugongs, sharks, um, all sorts of amazing things in that particular place. So that's an exciting spot to go to as well. And um, then we move on up along the Ningaloo Coast. And this is once again, this Ningaloo Coast World Heritage Area, uh, right up to, um, to Exmouth. Um, unfortunately, I've got to leave at Exmouth, but from then on out to the Murren Islands where um, there's just spectacular snorkeling and such like out there. You know, the Ningaloo Reef is really renowned for its um, for, the, for the coral reefs right along the edge of the coast there. And then it's a move on to the Dampier Archipelago where the, um, well, I think the Montebello is first of all, where the, uh, the beautiful, beautiful mountains, the Montebellos, um, the site of those uh, nuclear tests in the 1950s, but you can safely go there now and uh, explore those. And then on to those spectacular uh, ironstone um, islands off the coast there, the, the Dampier Archipelago. Um, with these amazing Aboriginal um, lithographs where they've, you know, ground these thousands of years ago, these motifs and, and artworks into the rocks. So that's a really special place to get to as well. And this is one of the few opportunities to do that. And then it's on to Broome. So, you know, probably know a lot about Broome. <laughs> Thanks, Howard. So yeah, I mean, so we've covered off most of those highlights for you just in that little interim there, um, but we will just sort of dive a little bit deeper into some of those amazing highlights um, along the way as well. So um, I'll leave uh, the professional, have you, I'll fill you in a little bit about the Abrolis Islands. Yeah, so one of the, um, you know, we, one of the things about these, the Abrolis Islands is you've got this amazing overlap between a a tropical marine environment and you've got the cold water things such as typified by the um, by the Australian sea lions, these friendly sea lions that we you know, nearly always get to interact with. Or oh, they come to see you as much as you want to see them. Uh, beautiful coral reefs, as I've said before, and um, on the islands themselves, as well as these historical sites and the, uh, the active, really unique fishing villages and so on, fishing shacks that are there. Uh, only um, occasionally occupied now, not full time for most of them. Um, and just, you know, just a beautiful place to be. The thir third group of islands is called the Wallaby Group because they do actually have these Tamar Wallabies, um, lots of reptiles, just amazing little places to, um, to visit. So yeah, some shots there give you an idea of what the beautiful scenery is like. Beautiful clear water, there's no rivers or anything running in, so the, the water's usually beautifully clear. Um, with the, the boat that we'll be on, we'll be able to, no matter what the weather's like, we'll be able to find little sheltered spots where we can get in and see um, and experience, um, ex experience this wonderful, wonderful place. And then it, this, of course, is the um, spectacular um, Shark Bay region. Um, it, the desert meets the sea, these beautiful red earth, uh, cliffs and um, uh, coastline, white sand, turquoise waters, clear water, uh, just absolutely, absolutely beautiful place to be. And so that's, um, you know, it's just, just, a, just a classic part of Australia. And to get to visit that, and we're going to the out of the way places there, not, to, not the usual touristy spots. Um, and um, with the vessels that the, will be on board, we're able to, to get about and get in very close and see things up close. And as I said before, with that interpretation, the Mulgana people will give us, um, will add that extra dimension and just bring it home. But this is um, a place that's been occupied, you know, for tens of thousands of years. Amazing Dutch history, French history, um, English history, pearling history. <laughs> Uh, Sandalwood, just the pioneers that, that lived in that area, the European pioneers, just extraordinary stories around those. So um, I think you're going to find that a really special place. 
And there's a, a huge population of bird life over there as well. Is there what, around 35% of Australia's uh, bird species as well can often be found there or fauna and flora. So um, I think on this expedition as well, there's so many opportunities to see, you know, plenty of wildlife, you've got plenty of bird life as well. So um, if you do love looking for birds, which I know there's probably quite a few people out there that are, um, definitely remember to pack your cameras and your binoculars uh, for this expedition. Um, so there'll be a number of different hikes and things like that along the way. Um, some may be a little challenging, but majority will be um, sort of slightly slightly easier. Um, there is a couple of uh, walks and things. And then we'll also have the explorer tenders as well, um, doing the expeditions um, just out on the water also. And of course, we do include kayaks complimentary as well. So any opportunity that we can get um, to pop those kayaks out, we'll absolutely be popping those out for everybody to enjoy. Yeah, I think that's one of the one of the the, the good things here is that um, whereas most of these places are fairly fairly flat, the surfaces can be a little bit unstable, um, but mo most places it's 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 possible to, um, to 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 get about reasonably easily, you know. So they're not they're not high level hiking, and you're mentioning there that the the wildlife, and this is one of the things about all of these offshore islands that often people get out there and they say this is amazing, you know, this is what the mainland is supposed to be like, but um, and as I said before, just millions of seabirds nest on these offshore islands, the Abrolhos and um, and further north. You know, protected from mainland predators, and um, and people will travel from all over the world to come to see these these places. Ningaloo Reef, of course, the this is the a couple of hundred kilometres of um, fringing reef. Um, unlike the Barrier Reef, which is offshore. You can um, basically swim out to these reefs from the shoreline. You know, some come quite in close, 100 metres or so, others um, a few hundred metres offshore, a little bit more. And um, so that's, that makes them very popular from, for shore visitors, but we'll be able to get out to the um, Uran Islands. And that's where um, there's some fantastic snorkeling out there, beautiful clear water and um, and and you know quite quite safe too. So it's not a place where you get lots of you know, with, you know, without the crocodiles and the stingers and those sorts of things. So, you know, not a place that you need to be worried about those sorts of things. And uh, yeah, you never know what qu quite what's going to turn up, but um, you know, that's something to, if you're into into snorkeling, I'd really, um, getting into the water, that other underwater world, another universe, um, this is the place to really go. Absolutely, yeah. It just makes you want to dive in there. It's just so clear. <laughs> you do, don't you? <laughs> Yeah, it's, um, yeah, and like you see a lot of these photos, you you know you see photos, and they're obviously taken, you know, special photos taken on on nice days and so on. But to be honest, these um you know these offshore islands without the river input and um, sediment laden waters that you often get there, usually you know you've got a very good chance. And um, and as I said, you know, with the with the the vessels, we're able to um, find the spots that are good on the day. You know, so with a good local knowledge, we can find the local spots. Yeah, and given that there's uh, a lot of snorkeling opportunities on this expedition, of course, we do include snorkeling equipment as well. So um, no need to bring your own from home. Um, it is all included for you. And there is also the opportunity to do diving. Um, the diving is an optional extra, but that is an option um, if you would like to partake in, in diving whilst on board as well. So. Yeah, so there's um, up here the Monte Bellows. These are, are limestone islands um, offshore, the, and um, you can see there the, the markers from those uh, British nuclear tests. You know, quite controversial in retrospect, but they had two series of um, of tests, basically to test the detonating devices for nuclear bombs, and then they went off to Maralinga in South Australia to to do the real thing. But um, you know, the um, you know these are you know, historically really significant islands right back from the um, the Dutch and the, the British and so on all the way through as well. And um, there's about 170 islands, I think, through here. So it's a lot of little islands about. So it's once again, a, a, a unique little part of the world and um, very special to get out there. Yeah, I mean, if we're lucky, um, hopefully everyone gets to see that cute little Rufus hair wallaby that um, can be found there. 
Yeah, so this is, um, once again, these islands offshore have um, been able to be little um, sanctuaries for these things away from the, the mainland predators and such like. And, uh, and so they're the, a lot of these little, little creatures, this is the only place they're found. So that's, um, you know, makes them special to visit as well. So we've got, you know, we've got just the contrast between the Southern Islands, the, um, you know, the South of the state and then heading all the way North. I think that's the other thing that will just um, intrigue you as well, just how much things change and how there's different sorts of beauty just in landscapes and, um, and such like as we go along. And then the damp here, you see here these, um, these, there, are, there are literally thousands of these, these stone engravings, which are, you know, unique for the, this period of human history. Um, and, um, you know, just, just in that landscape, it's a very, very dry, dry landscape, you know, picks up those, those cyclones as we um, sometimes, um, you know, come through for a couple of days here and there, but the rest of the time is generally pretty dry, beautiful, beautiful waters again around these islands and um, and you know just the stories behind the the Aboriginal civilizations that have lived there for tens of thousands of years and how they've adapted to climate and sea level change and and all of those sorts of things just makes for a wonderful story. And of course you'd all know who Dampier was, right? the English <laughs> buccaneer who came through in, I think 1699 and yeah, he was um, he was quite a naturalist as well. He did lots of drawings of things and um, studied the ocean currents and whatever. So, you know, it's quite um, he was quite a you know quite a um, quite an interesting character. You know, labelled as a pirate, but um, at the same time, he he really was a, a very um, very interesting guy in terms of what he what he saw and how he tried to figure out how things worked, ocean currents and you know, entering at that stage pretty much this unknown world. You know, Australia had sort of been discovered, but he was the one that was really starting to, to look at it a lot more closely. You read my mind then, Howard. I was just about to say that um, one of the things we do quite frequently is um, a lot of our expeditions you'll find will actually follow the footsteps of past uh, pioneers or um, the, the maritime history. And we follow those paths a lot because there's so many amazing stories along the way. So I mean, not only is there sensational um, views and wildlife and, you know, lessons to be learned about the geology, uh, sorry, geology of the region, but there's so much maritime history along this area as well. So definitely a lot to take in. Yes, well, it goes back to, you know, 1616 with, with Hartog, 1619 Houtman, um, you know, the various other Dutch, um, uh, ships that came by Dampier 1699, the, the the shipwrecks like the Batavia 1629, the um, the uh, Zutdorp 1712 along the cliffs where we go along, the Zeewick on the Abrolhos, and then uh, one of the English ships actually 1622 up of, off the Dampier archipelago out to sea there on the Trial Rocks. So um, you know all of the those countries, the Dutch and the French and the English and so and all involved there, but underlying it all, this incredible um, indigenous history that we're really just starting to to understand a whole lot more about how all that worked and um, and how rich that is, and starting to acknowledge it a whole lot more. Is there on any of the islands still, Howard? Um, I'm familiar that with the Abrolhos, but is there any actual like townships and sort of populations on these islands still? No, not not at all. Dirk Hartog Island has um, a um, what was a was a sheep station there. That's all now turned into a tourist um, tourist accommodation. But there's a you know very very little activity. There's no townships on there, and um, even at the Abrolhos Islands, the all of those um, fishermen shacks you see there were at one stage occupied fairly intensively for about three months of the year. But now. It's the fishery um, routine has changed and fishermen come and go on an irregular basis. So, you know, there the may look like there's a fair bit of human activity there, but you, you won't see many people, that's for sure, in any of these places. They're um, yeah, well, well away from the matting crowd, that's for sure, quite remote. And, um, and every, you know, every, every footstep, everywhere you walk, there's a, a bit of history, natural history or history, um, that um, just shines through and uh, 
a yeah, place for amazing stories as well. Definitely. Um, I'm, I'm sure you're well looking forward to getting on this expedition coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Every time. Never, you never ever tire of, um, of seeing any of this, this bit of the case. You know, it's always different. Um, you always learn more. You always see things you haven't seen before. And, um, and, uh, and I'm sure, you know, people on board will, will just be, um, you know, just, just be um, quite astonished by how much diversity there is and, um, and how much underlying history there is to, um, to where we are today. Yeah, I mean, not only do we visit the beautiful coastlines of Australia, but um, obviously in an ideal world, you can see this map actually up on the screen here. Um, this is where we had planned to cruise originally in 21 and 22, but um, obviously in light of everything going on at the moment, we've had to sort of be quite adaptable. So majority of our expeditions are gonna be domestic um, around Australia um, for the, the remainder of the year. Um, and then in 2022, we are hoping um, to get back to some of these destinations as well. Um, but yeah, we've got some amazing itineraries up and, and coming for some of our other expeditions as well. So definitely watch this space for when international travel can resume because um, we've got some amazing itineraries there as well. So um, I might just... Well, we used briefly. to um, you know, often say with the West Coast, you know, it's Australia's best kept secret and we like <laughs> to keep it that way, you know, but it looks like you've discovered it. So, you know, it's going to be terrific to share it with other people and... Um, you know, um, let you in on some of our secrets over, over this along this part of the coastline. You know, and um, yeah, I think once you've been up and down here, you'll find that this is really something that's um, yeah, it matches anything else you'll find anywhere. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I think that's the beauty too of you know being a small expedition ship is that it does give us that freedom and flexibility to explore those you know, those little off the beaten track places that a lot of people aren't familiar with. Um, so sorry, Western Australia, we've just dis discovered some of your coastline. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it definitely gives us that flexibility. Um, and our ships being nice and small and intimate as well. We've always got a, a presentation up in the lounge there, up on the top right. So you'll have the lovely Howard giving you a presentation up in that room and, you know, filling you in on up and coming um, information to learn about the regions that we'll be seeing. Um, it's really nice and relaxed too, and plenty of places on the open decks where you can actually just, you know, go and escape and um, have your own sense of space. Um, and then of course the bridge. Um, so that's one of our highlights. I think that people do love is that we've got an open bridge on board. So you can see all those people in the bridge there. Um, it's one of the best seats in the house. So as you're coming through some of these spectacular coastlines and you know, even if it's a, during a whale migration, for example, it's um, a fantastic place to be to spot dolphins and spot whales and even just um, take in the, the scenery as we're driving through, so we're cruising through. <laughs> and then, of course, everything's inclusive. So we do have um, all your meals a chef prepared on board. Um, and then, of course, with lunch and dinner service, we do have um, house beers, house spirits and... Um, house wines, which we do include with lunch and dinner, but you can absolutely purchase those from any of the numerous bars outside of those hours as well. So um, I'm sure Howard can attest that um, the food is actually <laughs> sensational on board. Having I've been on a couple of trips myself as well, and the chefs are fantastic um, and they can cater to almost any dietary requirement as well. So do let the reservations team know if um, there is any special requests there as well. Yes, I don't think you could package um, a better, you know, a bit of combination of all of the, the bits and pieces, you know, the vessel, the, the hospitality on board, the destinations um, and the bits and pieces. And that's, you know, that's why I'm sort of happy to be involved and, you know, spend the time sharing these stories because I think this is, um, this one is ticks, ticks the boxes and does it in the right way, you know, so that's, um, you know, that's why I'm happy to be a, be a part of it. Absolutely. And by having these little explorer tenders that you can see on the screen here, these are actually purpose built for our ships. Um, so we will actually have two of those on board the Coral Adventurer and the Geographer. Um, and they're designed to take all of our guests at one time. So 
um, they'll split them. So they'll be half, half. Um, and then they're, they're those beautiful little vessels that um, Howard was talking about that get you into all of those little destinations nice and easily. Um, and it allows us to spend more time as well actually exploring because we've got that closed canopy on there. So keeps that sun protection away. Um, and then you've also got a marine toilet at the back. Um, and of course, you wouldn't want to miss any of Howard's fantastic lectures um, whilst actually <laughs> cruising. So there is a, an audio commentary on board as well which I'm sure you will take advantage of, Howard. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's just a matter of you know, sharing and you know, so people um, um, uh, see what it is they're looking at, <laughs> if I can put it that way, you know, like you can see things, but, um, but um, sometimes it's good to tell, have someone to help you um, just understand it. You know, I'm not, I'm not, not ramming things down people's throat, but just, you know, it's just in casual conversation, questions come up and, and such like, and, um, you know, just sharing the, the things that I've, I myself find interesting and fascinating and uh, you know, th so that's what it's all, all about. Absolutely. <laughs> so I can see a couple of people have uh, popped a couple of questions through. Some we have tried to answer along the way where they were relevant, but absolutely if there is any other questions, we'll definitely get to those ones as well. Um, and then this just gives you a bit more of an idea of some of the inclusions that we do have. So some of the locations will be using the Explorer tender um, and others we might use the Zodiac. So it just depends on the weather and the location as to uh, which of the vessels that we do use. Um, but we can use the, the platform that you would have seen in that previous image um, to board our Zodiacs as well. So that just makes it really easy once again to get in and out of those. Um, and of course the diving that I did mention previously. So yeah, so all of our expeditions will always include an expedition leader, um, expedition team, and then guest lecturers as well. Um, you've got all your snorkeling gear. Uh, we try and do some sunset drinks in beautiful locations where possible as well. So I'd imagine there'll be some opportunities for that um, on this expedition. Um, and also some captain's welcome drinks um, on board the ship too. So um, plenty of opportunities to, um, to do that. So. I'm just going to give you a little quick overview of some of our vessels. So as I mentioned, we will be capping them at 99 guests. Um, so it'll be the Coral Adventure and the Coral Geographer who will be doing these particular expeditions. So the upcoming one will be the Adventurer. Um, and then we've got our Coral Geographer joining us very soon. So she'll be um, having her maiden voyage up in the, uh, the top end very soon. So we're looking forward to welcoming her. Um, and then with those, we'll have a combination of uh, stateroom. So you'll see sort of the little round circles at the bottom of the ship there. They'll be our leading category stateroom. So they're our coral deck staterooms. Um, so they just generally have the picture window. I'm oh, sorry, the, my apologies, the portal windows. Um, and then the next level up, you'll find that you've got those bigger windows, which will be the picture windows. And then your following level up will be your, your balconies. So our explorer deck all has the balconies. And then the promenade decks will have the, um, the picture windows for you. So quite a few categories to choose from there. And then of course, we've got our fantastic bridge suites as well. So that image on the bottom right hand side there, that's our bridge suite. Um, that's only half of it. So that's the lounge and the, um, the bedroom. And then as you go around the side, you've got this amazing um, bathroom with um, beautiful views through the windows as well with the, the bathtubs in those. So they're about 55 square metres approximately. Um, and then our smallest of our, our vessel um, staterooms is around um, 17, I think is the smallest on any of ours. So definitely very spacious vessels. And then Coral Geographer being the sister ship um, to the Adventurer. Very similar type of layout. Um, the layouts in terms of the levels and the deck plan is the same. Um, the only difference is we've got six bridge deck suites on this particular one um, and they'll be slightly smaller. So still huge and they're around 35-ish um, square metres on those ones. Um, and you can see that beautiful communal type dining room that we've got there. Um, because everywhere we go, so amazing and beautiful views, we've tried to sort of when we've designed the ships, have that in mind so that there's beautiful expansive views throughout the whole ship almost. So um, you've got these massive windows throughout that whole dining room. So yeah, you never miss the scenery. 
it's terrific, isn't it? You know, in the olden days, you would have had to climb up the top of the mast to get the views that you going to get from the top of this ship I think so yeah <laughs> it would say that any mast climbing you had to just um, sit out on the top deck absolutely I mean you can understand why back in you know the olden days when they had to to deal with what they had with you know different navigation systems and not the same technologies you know the, the story of the Batavia and wreckages and things like that how they came to be yeah it's a different world mm-hmm I see someone asked a question there about the tenders. Um, so we do use the tenders um, every day. So all of our expeditions, we will use those Explorer tenders to transfer in and out. Um, or they might even be an actual expedition themselves that we do where we're you know, cruising around some of the islands or um, snorkeling from those vessels. Um, and the white thing at the stern, I'm not 100% sure which one that one was, but bear with me and I'll see if I can answer that by flipping back shortly for you. Um, so we do have a couple of offers at the moment that you can see on this page. Um, so I did mention one of them in the beginning. So with our expeditions up and coming, um, any new bookings that are made between now and um, the 31st of March, uh, we'll have that complimentary deposit protection note. So that just allows that flexibility where you can move your booking to a future date um, or you move your deposit um, without penalties, provided it's within our um, cancellation terms there. Um, and then we also have a reduced sole use at the moment on our upcoming expedition. So the sole use is only on the 10th of March 2021 departure where we've got that reduced sole use. Um, however, sole use is applicable on the other expeditions, but we don't have any offers on that one at the moment. Um, so keep that one in mind. Um, and then just with the uncertain times at the moment, you know, we have we can appreciate that, you know, things can be ever changing. So at the moment, um, for the 10th of March departure, um, if you were to place a booking and if uh, as a result of COVID, um, your booking was cancelled or you couldn't travel um, for whatever reason as a result of COVID-19, um, then we are offering a refund option for that. So you can either, either utilise the future cruise credit um, or you can also be offered a refund depending on which you'd prefer to take. So, um, so that's only for voyages booked and departing before the 31st of March 2021. Um, so that will apply to our 10th of March expedition um, on our Abrolhos itinerary. So of course, um, our friendly guys and our reservations team are, are always there to um, answer any additional questions as well. Um, you can just either give them a call or drop them an email um, with any questions or to make a reservation also. Um, so you can see the details on the screen, but of course it is on our, our website as well. Um, and I have seen a few people have asked that, um, is there going to be a recording of this webinar? So there will actually be a copy of this webinar that you can view. So if you go to our website down on the bottom, you'll see that there's a little link for events. Um, we'll post a copy of this particular webinar um, in a YouTube link that you can access via that events page. Um, and then any up and coming webinars that we've got scheduled, just pop in every now and then onto that events page to see if there is any um, future scheduled webinars. Um, and if there's any of our other itineraries that you'd like to know a little bit about, um, we have done a number of recordings from our other itineraries, which can also be accessed by that events page as well. So be sure to jump on there if you're wanting to um, see any other recordings in this one as well. So thanks everybody for um, attending. I can see there is a couple of questions. So I'm just gonna jump in quickly and um, see if we've got a little bit of time to answer those for you. So let's just have a look. So I can see that um, someone has asked a question about um, protected waters as well as open um, and how rough may the open water get um, and single supplements. So yeah, I did cover the single supplements. Um, so we do have single rooms available. Um, at the moment with that reduced sole use for the 10th of March, the, um, the solo supplement has been reduced to an additional 15%. Um, so it's a twin share plus 15. 
whereas typically our sole use is um, an additional 50, five zero. So it's just 1.5 um, would be the, the normal um, sole use rate, but you can grab a copy um, of our brochure plus all of our information as well on our website, which will have all of those rate, um, rates and stuff on there for you as well. And let's see, have we got any more? So with, with the open open water, the um, you know it is is some of the, some of the travel is in the open ocean, but the the captain will give us good warning of what's coming along, and you know just as a precaution, um, you know bring a little bit of travel calm or something else that your chemist might recommend to you to you know just in case that sort of if, if that sort of weather's coming along, but um, you know that's part of the the expedition and excitement of the of the adventure really is just the different sorts of conditions that things are up but um it's quite a big ship and um can well handle any of those sorts of conditions as comfortably as possible yeah they've um they've definitely got rolls royce stabilizers on board that um handle quite quite conditions so um and in regards to the whale sharks um no so this sort of time frame i mean who knows, um, they are wild animals. So I guess there may be potential that you might see some. Um, however, we won't be actually partaking in any um, swimming with the whale sharks in, in the Ningaloo expedition. So yeah, it's just, um, they're seasonal. So this time of year, they, they won't be around at that time generally. So just having a look. Um, how, do, how long do we usually stay on each island each day um, is another question. So, um, so that, that does depend. Um, you can get a bit more of a breakdown as well on our website. You'll see it does mention um, often how long we spend in each location. Um, some we might be spending just the one day um, in the location, but then others we might be spending like, for example, in the Abrolhos Island area, uh, we're going to be spending three days exploring the Abrolhos Island group um, and then Shark Bay will have the two days um, and then some of the other ones will just be the one day um, but it really is it depends on the the conditions for the day and you know all that sort of thing of course as well um, but yeah they do vary um, throughout this itinerary as to the number of days that we spend. And then also I can see there's a question about, um, do we supply the equipment? Yeah, so the equipment is um, on board. So if you do want to do one of the optional um, dives, then your equipment is included in that price. Um, in exact, in relation to the exact dives, um, I might just um, maybe just um, shoot our reservations team an email. I, I don't know the exact locations off the top of my head. Um, but if you shoot through an email to our reservations team, if you are interested in diving, um, they'll be able to sort of give you a bit of an idea of uh, where the diving locations would be. Um, and then also uh, what kind of capacities we might have at the moment and some rates there as well. So there we go. Um, and I can see there's a question about the sail safe provisions for um, for the COVID testing, if the vaccine becomes more available. Um, at this stage, we are obviously monitoring everything in terms of government advices. Um, and we have partnered with Respond Global, who is um, a very well respected medical organization. Um, so we're basically guided by, um, by their uh, suggestion at the moment. So that plan that we put together is actually um, based around um, their knowledge as well. Um, so should that be the case, um, then we will be communicating that. But um, at this stage, I, I'm not sure as to if the vaccine becomes available, what the changes in processes would be. So at the moment, um, our self-safe plan is as is, so. Okay, hopefully I've answered all of those questions there. Let's see if there's any others. 
looks like we've got someone in the UK. Um, fingers crossed. Um, we have had a lot of interest from um, so many different regions for this Western Australian itinerary. It's such a fantastic itinerary and I can see why Howard's so excited to actually get out on this one. Um, so we will most likely um, be introducing these ones in future years. Um, but at the moment, um, they haven't released um, too many other dates, um, but we do have at the moment, um, as you would have seen those early 2022 dates for our departure. So hopefully if you are over in the UK, you can get over in 2022. So, and is there any last questions there for myself or um, for Howard that you might like us to cover for you? I can see COVID testing done during the cruise. Um, so there is that COVID test that is prior to the cruise with the negative result. Um, we do also have um, a medical practitioner on board, whether it be either a nurse or a GP um, on board. Um, and they will be doing temperature testing daily and there will be checks and things like that daily. Um, not specifically COVID tests, um, unless you're showing you know, a result of symptoms or something like that. But um, yeah, they will be there doing temperature testing and that sort of thing. Okay, I think that's covered everybody's questions. Um, but yeah, thank you so much everybody for, um, for joining us. Um, and thank you so much, Howard, as well, for taking time out of your day to, to share these wonderful experiences with everyone. Yeah, my, my pleasure. Really looking forward to it and meeting all of these people on board. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm envious of everyone that is on this trip. It looks absolutely sensational. So um, as I said, there is still spots on that 10th of March. So if you want to go along and um, keep Howard company on this expedition, <laughs> there is still spots for you on board that one as well so um thanks everybody and um have a wonderful day and if you've got any additional questions you can just shoot them across to our lovely reservations team and they'd be more than happy to um to help you out so thanks everybody thanks Ramona thanks Howard talk soon right. bye yeah.